This is my beautiful Volvo V70R that I picked up for just $1,500. And over the last couple videos, I've been restoring this thing and getting it back on the road. When I first picked up this car, it left me stranded just three minutes after I bought it, but I towed it home and put an axle in it so that I could properly drive it out on the road only to find that there was a lot more issues going on. The automatic transmission was shifting pretty rough and there was no all-wheel drive, which is one of the things that makes this car so special. We fixed that for just $100 by flushing out the transmission with 16 quarts of fluid and clearing a diagnostic trouble code that was stopping the all-wheel drive from working. In this video though, we're gonna keep tackling more projects because there are still a lot of issues with the car as you would expect for 1500 bucks. I mean, so far I don't think I've put more than $300 into it and the improvements have been huge. So we're gonna keep going with it and see how far we can take this scrap V70R. The suspension is the main thing that we're gonna to tackle today. It is electronically adaptive. That was kind of a big deal for Volvo back then. Right now, they're not even worth touching because of how shot the suspension is. Oh God, the suspension is shot. We're gonna be replacing all of the shock absorbers today, which should be pretty exciting. In addition to that, I also wanna repair the interior of this car because these interiors are so nice when they're in good condition. Finally, at the end of this video, we'll be doing a performance exhaust from IPD, which I'm pretty excited about because one of the best things about these Volvos is the five cylinder engine and the sound that it makes. And I wanna hear that from this car. So we're gonna put an IPD oval tube cat back exhaust on this thing. And it should sound pretty sweet for a daily driver. Let me just give you a quick walk around the car, show you where it's at currently and show you kind of all the things that still need to be fixed on this thing. Like I said, in this video, we'll tackle the suspension, which as you can see, is super bouncy, it keeps bouncing after you press on it, which is not how a shock absorber should work. In the interior, here are the problems I was talking about. Giant hole in the carpet. I don't even know how you do this. Giant hole in the seat bolster here. This mirror is completely shot. I can't see a thing through it because the fluid has kind of failed. This is quite a common thing, but the dashboard stitching here is ripped. We'll be fixing that as well. The exhaust back here is completely stock. We'll be fixing that with an IPD exhaust that I have sitting in the back. Pretty excited about that. And then while I'm walking around, let me just show you some of the other problems that we have that we'll tackle in a future video because it's too much for one more video. Under the hood, we've got a lot of oil seepage. It's hard to see now because the cover is on, but underneath there, the PCV is leaking. We'll be tackling that at some point. The front bumper is obviously the biggest eyesore and uh, I'm kind of just waiting for a replacement to pop up online somewhere. If someone is selling a silver V70R bumper from an 05 model year, please hit me up. Finally, in a future video, we'll put some wheels on this thing because these have to be some of the worst curb rashed wheels I've ever seen on a car. We'll fix those in the future too. I have some really cool wheels actually for this car, but today we're gonna tackle suspension, interior, and exhaust. And I think that should be a pretty solid video and quite a transformation for the car. So let's get to work. Here's a little sneak preview at the wheels that I have for this thing. My plan to replace the suspension is pretty simple. I'm just gonna use a used set of shocks from a part out car that I did earlier this year. It was a crashed S60R. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if they share the same rear suspension. I think they do. Anyway, we're gonna put all these used shocks in this car. They're only about 15,000 miles old. So that is relatively new. I'm not gonna do a new set because it's two thousand dollars for a full set of shocks on this car and that doesn't even include the top bushings or bearings owning one of these r's is not cheap 
but the used set of suspension is practically free. And it's only got 15,000 miles on it, so a ton of life left in it. And I'd be very comfortable running that on this V70R, especially when you consider the current state of these shocks. It's bad. I'll walk you through pulling this front left shock off, and then I'll just knock out all the rest because it's pretty similar. But obviously, it's going to start with taking off this wheel. First thing I like to do is come down here, remove the ABS. This isn't totally necessary, but this wire can get in the way. Then we'll remove this sensor. You can put the bolt back in place so you don't lose it. What exactly is this? I don't know. Oh, this one actually went really nicely. I love that for me. Now we'll do this guy underneath too. Can be a little trickier, no problem. Good. Disconnecting this guy. There it is. Now you come up top and you loosen these three 13s. And that's the old 4C. was easy. The old set of shocks is out of the car. That was actually a ton of work. That is the old set. And this is the newer set of shocks. It's not brand new, but as you can tell, they are in really nice condition. These have 15,000 miles on them. What is cool about these shocks is they have a set of lowering springs on them from H&R. They're already installed and I wouldn't mind having this car a little lower. So that's how we're gonna run them. I can't remember if I mentioned it in the last video, but this shock absorber is a bit older than all the rest for some reason. And this plate did have a tiny bit of play in it. So I'm waiting for that to arrive. Should be here in a couple hours. We're gonna just disassemble this one. The rest will leave. Stoked to get these new ones in the car. Like I said, this was easily the worst part of this car that was left, so let's get those done. One of the biggest problems here is gonna be getting this wire snaked up through this side of the engine bay to the connector, which is right up here. And it's almost impossible to do with your hand. I mean, it is impossible because 
the ABS system is right there and there's just a million brake lines. So I've tied together a bunch of zip ties and what I'm gonna try and do is drop these down through the wheel well, tie the um, connector at the bottom and see if I can fish it up. So let's see how this goes. Okay, did it come out the bottom anywhere? Yes, it did. Now I'm gonna take one more zip tie here, tie it around a plastic part of the connector. And now I can link this into the zip tie that I dropped down here, just like that. Okay, here it goes. Ha ha ha, success! That actually worked so much better than I thought. Now, <laughs> we've got a bunch of zip ties here, which I'll reuse for the other side. But I can just cut this guy off. And there's our connector. Now let's see if I can snake it in just down here where it's supposed to go. Boom, easy. So that's it for the suspension. That was a ton of work, but I'm gonna keep getting right back to it because I wanna do the exhaust while the car is up on the jack stands. And then when I lower it down, we'll do the interior, which I'm pretty excited about. So let's get to work on taking off the old exhaust. It's time for the most interesting part of any exhaust install, which is will the old rusty crusty bolts come off. I wanted to use the Milwaukee, but the cat's in the way, so I'll have to do it good old fashioned way. Was that a snapped bolt? I think it's coming off, guys. Wow. Wow, it's actually spinning off by hand. I do wanna share something pretty exciting, and that is the fact that I've purchased an exhaust hanger removal tool. I'm gonna to put this jack under the rear muffler. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Let's see, will it come down? Oh yes. That was shockingly easy to do. This is the old exhaust. Big old back box there. And I'm so excited to get an IPD exhaust on this thing. Let me show you that in a second, but before we uh, get to that IPD exhaust, maybe we just turn the key and see if the 4C is throwing any codes with the engine running. Here's the new IPD system next to the old one. You can see it's got a similar sized back box. The resonator is a whole lot smaller though. This is a little higher flowing and it gets rid of this weird double tube design. You can see they do this for ground clearance and what IPD does is they actually use an oval tube pipe. So this is NASCAR technology or something. At least that's what sold me on it and it looks pretty freaking sweet. The best part about it though is that it just retains the ground clearance and this thing is gonna sound so sweet on the car. So let's throw it on. I'm a little worried this is the wrong size. Maybe the S60R and V70R are different. last exhaust hanger was so difficult. Well, as you can tell, I have a bit of a problem. There's like a two inch gap here. Um, I think IPD does market this exhaust as both for an S60R and a V70R. And previously it was on the S60R, which is maybe why this setting here is too short. So I'm hoping that this extends far enough 
to make it work. Now this might be a bit of a smoke show starting up with all this penetrating oil, but hopefully it'll be worth it. Everything looks pretty good. The only thing I'm concerned about is this heat shield here over bumps. That's gonna make a noise. I mean, this has already been damaged. Again, this exhaust tip fitment needs some work. I think this is the setting for the S60R. So let's see what we can do. exciting moment for two different reasons. Number one, we're going to set this thing down on the wheels and see how the lowering springs look. And number two is hearing the exhaust for the first time. So let's get right to it. I'm so excited. Let's go for it. Ooh, that's pretty nice. First impressions. I can see that this is visually towed in, in the rear, and same on the other side. I like the look of the camber. It's definitely sitting at a nice ride height. Still nice and practical. I'm assuming they might settle a little, especially since we put in new seats, but this looks pretty good. I'm stoked. Here goes the first startup. Give her a little rev. Nice, it's really good, it's subtle. It's actually quieter than I thought. Cool, I think for the automatic transmission, it's good. I hate when automatic transmissions are too loud. They just don't sound that good. Unless it's like a BMW DCT, I can already hear someone commenting it. Let's talk Volvo interiors for a sec because it gets kind of strange. These are the seats out of the crashed S60R that I pulled out and that I've been saving for this reason exactly. They're in beautiful condition aside from a little stitching that came undone on the driver's seat, but significantly better condition. Now you might think this is just a matter of bolting these in after you remove the old ones, but Unfortunately, Volvo decided throughout this generation to change the seat configuration like three different times. So although these are identical looking seats, identical colors and out of an R as well, they could actually be very different. And I tried researching it online, but it's so unclear when the model year crossovers start and end. So I figured the best way to do it would just be to pull the old seats out and put these seats in and see if they fit. Whether that's gonna work or not, I don't know, we'll find out. But either way, we're gonna tackle this driver side carpet, which also came out of the crashed R. I also have this dash cover that has intact stitching because the stitching rips on a lot of these cars. This one's ripped. And then I have a rear view mirror that is in good condition where the fluid hasn't failed yet. So regardless of whether or not these seats work, we'll tackle a bunch of different little things in the interior that should make a big difference. We have a free knife. This is actually nice. Made by Opinel. Nice, beautiful French knife. Maybe this was a murder weapon. Paradise Cove Malibu, $50 for parking. God, they're taxing over there in Malibu. 
Oh, what the, an iPad sleeve or something? An iPad keyboard? What is this? Folks, I have some unfortunate news. The seats are not gonna fit. The ones I have are out of an 04. This car is an 05. They are not the same. The seat rail is not the same. And I thought I would be able to swap over the cushions and the backrest onto the seat rails, but that's not possible either. You can see here the foam is yellow. And when I show you the new one, you'll see it's just a completely different design. This is the one that came out of the car. As you can tell, just not even remotely similar. A complete redesign of the seats between 04 and 05. So these two beauties, unfortunately, will not be making it into the car. If you want these for your car, let me know. But we still have the carpet to do, that piece, the mirror. And of course, we'll clean out all of this, replace that carpet, because that hole is just pissing me off. And after that, we'll go for a drive in the canyons, see how the suspension feels. I'll give you some nice exhaust sound clips of this IPD exhaust. Far, just rolling out of the garage it feels significantly better oh yeah <laughs> that exhaust sounds nice it's not that loud actually I'm surprised I'm actually not mad about that especially while this car is automatic it doesn't need to be that loud sometimes you hear like an automatic VQ that's been just straight piped and you just hear it going Wow, 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 wow. So we don't need that. That is good stuff. <laughs> the PB blaster is coming off of my exhaust. Now I can see the smoke. Nothing better than putting an exhaust on a car. Smiling cheek to cheek. Oh yeah, it sounds good. Now there's three little buttons on the dashboard. That's what these Volvo R cars were kind of popular for at the time. Before I could not even put it in advanced because 
the shocks were so blown that it felt like it was gonna shoot up through the hood if you were gonna put it in advanced. So let's try advanced here and see what that feels like. Oh, noticeably firmer right off the bat. Oh, wow. Ooh, the turning is great. It honestly doesn't feel too different from the BC. Oh, and it still sounds great. Ah, oh, this is awesome. What a transformation. Nice open road. Oh, yes. Wow, and it breaks so good now. That was in advanced. It's not too bumpy. It's like it just feels firm and responsive. And we can put it back into comfort to cruise home. Ah. Oh. This is so much better. I'm all the way out here in Angeles Crest and I just smelled some oil. And look at this, that PCV hose right there is just split. Oh no. I wonder if I... <laughs> No, no, the whole PCV hose. Oh no, this is bad. I'm so far away from home. This is the danger of Angelus Crest in an unreliable car. That's why it was misfiring when I started it earlier. Let's see if it'll start now. Oh yeah, no problem. Love to see it.